I've always been invested into the personal finance space ever since my uni days. Back then, I was really into this movement called the FIRE movement, which I guess was and still is very popular in the financial space. I mean, who doesn't want to be financially, financially independent and who doesn't want to retire early? But ever since then, you know, I've learned a lot of new things. And I've kind of moved on from that because I realized that that isn't really for me. Anyway, throughout my journey, I've started to realize or I started to learn a few things that went against what I initially thought about money. So today, I'll share the five biggest lessons that I've learned about money that I wish I knew earlier on in my life. Whether you're watching this as someone in your 20s, 30s, or even 40s, it doesn't really matter. It should still help you out. So let's get started. So I started off my career with a salary of 4,000 ringgit a month at the age of 21. So that's pretty good, right? By right, I should have been able to save a good amount of money every single month, but I didn't really want to go overboard with it because I wanted to enjoy my life. You know, I never had that much money in my bank account ever before, so I did want to enjoy the nicer things in life. And I managed to save around 500 ringgit a month, which is still okay. It's still around 12% of my salary. Then my first realization came. So thinking back, I guess this wasn't really a realistic goal, but back then, I had this goal of being financially well off enough by the time I hit my late 30s or maybe even early 40s, that I could do whatever I wanted to. But then after doing the math for a while, I realized that saving up this 500 ringgit a month, it just wasn't going to be enough. I knew I had to save more money, but I couldn't, or I guess I didn't want to. Like I said, I wanted to enjoy my life, especially when I was still at a younger age. And I even did the math, you know, let's say if I managed to save an extra 100 or 200 ringgit, it still wouldn't have made a huge difference. And that's when I knew I needed to up my income. So that's my first realization. Your income is a lot more important than how much money you can save, especially if you're someone who's just starting out in your career, or even if you're someone who's already been in your career for a while, but still isn't earning that much money. So the thing is, we need to know is that there is a limit to how much money we can save. If you're someone on a 3,000 ringgit a month salary, let's say, um, it's nearly impossible for you to go beyond, I would say 1,500 ringgit a month in savings. It's nearly impossible. Whereas if we talk about earning money, there's no real limit to that. Regardless of who you are, how much you earn, there's no limit to how much money you can earn. So after I realized this, I started being an extreme tryhard at work. I wanted to do really well at work so I could get promotions. And of course, I also started this YouTube channel that is doing kind of okay, I guess, and it did help me grow my income as well. I also tried many other things. I tried things like freelancing, drop shipping, all those common site income things that, you know, uh, we will hear about online. I tried all of those things as well to try and up my income. And the extra income came and it definitely helped. What I realized is that the amount of money that I was getting from my side income and by putting in more effort into work, it made a huge difference compared to what I could do by just saving an extra few hundred ringgit every single month. In truth, like I said, it was very, very hard for me to save that amount of money or save more than the 500 ringgit I was initially saving. But earning the extra income, it did a lot more for my cash flow and for my savings, investments, stuff like that. But I'm not here to talk about side income opportunities or how you guys can earn more money. Maybe that's for another video if you guys are interested. But what I'm trying to say is, if you're someone who's still young or if you're someone who still isn't earning a lot of money, your main, main focus should be on growing your income. Don't try and spend too much time trying to see where else you can save a few hundred ringgit or maybe 50 ringgit a month, or don't try and over-optimize your investments. I'm going to be like brutally honest with you guys. If you don't have a high income or if you don't have a lot in savings, then making an extra one, two percent per year on your investments, it just won't make a big difference. At the start, your entire focus should be on growing your income and it doesn't matter whether you want to do that via your career or if you want to do that via, you know, having a side hustle. For those of you guys who've never had a side hustle before or maybe a side business, I know it can be scary, you know. We look online about how to earn more money and there's tons of videos saying, you know, do this and you can earn 10,000 ringgit a month. There's just so many for you to choose from and it feels like you don't even know where to start. But trust me, just look for one that you're interested in Try and learn online. There's so many free resources out there and then see how you can monetize that skill. After going through this entire process, um, I've really been proven that it's so much easier for me to earn an extra 1,000 a month than for me to try and save an extra 1,000 a month from my existing salary. Moving on, the next thing that I learned was that having debt, it's not actually a bad thing. So in the personal finance space, um, it's a very common goal to have to say, I want to be debt free. I want to achieve zero in terms of loans. You know, you, if you go to Instagram, you'll see a lot of people with their account names being like, you know, my journey to debt freedom, my journey to zero debt, all those stuff. And even if you look at personal finance experts like Dave Ramsey, he will always tell people to stay away from that. So, you know, 
growing up, learning through these accounts, you know, learning personal finance through all of this, that's what I thought for a long time as well. And I kind of get it. Taking on too much in loans in the form of, you know, credit cards, personal loans, um, housing loans, car loans, all these things, they are the leading cause of people going bankrupt according to AKPK. So it makes sense, right? If these things are so harmful, then we should stay away from it, right? Well, not really. What we need to do is to just be more financially responsible. That is, at the end of the day, is just a tool. It's not evil on its own. It just depends on how we use it. And the reason that I want to talk about this is that that can be very beneficial for us. The clearest example of this is ASB financing. So early on in my life, I decided to take up a 100,000 ringgit ASB financing loan. And this money was immediately put into my ASB account, earning me this dividends every single year. There's just no way for someone in their early 20s like me to have 100,000 ringgit to throw into ASB unless you know they got it from their parents or maybe they just earn a lot of money. But yeah, for me, it was impossible without this ASB financing loan. And the thing is, at the end of the day, ASB financing, it still outperforms directly contributing to ASB um, by yourself. So I did the math for all of this before. Um, if you guys want to check out the video about ASB financing compared to directly contributing to ASB, you can check out my video. I'll leave the link down in the description below. But yeah, this is just one example of how debt can be good. And if you try to stay away completely, then you wouldn't take ASB financing, which to me is kind of a waste. Another common form of debt that a lot of Malaysians should have is PTPTN. So with a profit rate of just 1% a year, it doesn't really make sense for us to try and save up so much money just to pay this off as soon as we possibly can. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't pay off your loan, you should still do it, and I still do it on a monthly basis, of course, but you should just pay the amount that you're supposed to pay every single month. So for me, I think it's around 180 ringgit. I pay this every month, I don't pay any extra at all, and I have no plans to try and clear this sooner than I need to. And the reason for this is that we can use this money that we've saved up, and instead of clearing our PTPT and loan, we can put it into stuff like money market funds or ASB. Think about it this way. We're taking a loan right now, but they're charging us 1% for borrowing this money, and we're putting it into an investment that's getting us 4 to 5% a year. So why would we want to clear off this debt so quickly? We may as well just make advantage of it or take advantage of it and earn that extra money. And sometimes banks will also offer these promotions where they're giving us 0% interest rate loans. I've shared one recently by Maybank on my Twitter and my Instagram as well. And to me, every time I see this offers, I will take it up. I did a video as well about how I took up an RHB loan, 0%. I think I did it one year ago. And I will always continue to do this. The thing is, this is free money, right? I can take this money. I can put it into somewhere like Versa Safe, And then every month, I will withdraw from there to pay off my loan. And if you notice, most of the richest people in the world, they still take up loans even though they already have so much money. So yeah, what I've slowly learned, and this is, I would say, I guess, a quite controversial opinion in the personal finance space, but what I learned is that debt on its own, it's not evil. It's only bad if you do things like miss our payments or take on too much loans that we can't afford to pay off. So yeah, like I said earlier, we just have to be more financially responsible instead of trying to avoid this completely because as I've shown you guys, it can be beneficial to us. The next thing that I learned is that for us to get rich and achieve financial freedom, we kind of have to invest our money. So I guess, yeah, this is pretty common knowledge. It's not going against any financial opinions out there in the world. But for me personally, at least, growing up, I was never taught to invest my money beyond something like ASB. And I know a lot of my friends, we all grew up in a similar environment as well. I guess this came from our parents and back in their generation, investing into something like the stock market, it just wasn't really common knowledge. I know that investing back then, the barrier to entry was high. You needed quite a little bit of money and the commissions were high as well. So to them, you know, investing is risky. There's a possibility of losing heart and cash, right? So why not just stick to something safe like fixed deposits or ASB? I know most people who are maybe a bit older, I know these are what they stick to. Growing up, you know, when I started to pick up the interest in the stock market and investing and stuff like that, my mom was actually a bit worried. She used to tell me all these horror stories about her friends, her family who lost a lot of money in the stock market. And she told me to be very careful to avoid scams because these things are extremely risky and she's never done it before. But now I've realized that, you know, investing, yes, it is risky, but it's still necessary for us to be rich. We can't just leave our money in a bank account. Even though earlier in this video, I did say that income is the most important thing and you shouldn't try and over-optimize your investments, investing is still critical for us to hit financial freedom. The thing is, in my opinion at least, for us to get from a net worth of zero to maybe somewhere around 500,000 ringgit, income is extremely important. Like I said, early on, it's extremely important. But for us to get from 500,000 ringgit to 1 million, 2 million, 3 million ringgit, this is where investing comes in. Our income, um, 
at a certain point, you know, we want our money to start working for us as well. So yeah, it's good for us to earn a lot of money, but once we invest it into something like a stock market, that will help it compound as well and make things a lot easier. Now, I just want to say there's nothing wrong with sticking to things like, you know, ASB and fixed deposits because yeah, they are safe. But the thing is the returns, they'll be limited to the range of around three to 5%, right? If you put into fixed deposits, 3%, ASB these days around 5%. Compare this to something like the S&P 500. This has given an average return of 12% per year for the last 10 years. So yeah, it's a pretty big difference in terms of returns. To put this into perspective, let's say you have $100 ringgit to invest and you want to leave this for the next 25 years so that when you retire, you have a pretty nice nest egg. Okay, so let's say you take this $100 ringgit and you put it into fixed deposits and you get 3% a year. At the end of 25 years, you have 242,000 ringgit, which is good, right? It's still better than leaving your money under the pillow. But if you took this money, you put it into stock market instead, and let's say you got 10% uh, returns every single year, the value of investment will be 1.7 million ringgit. So you can see it's a huge difference between fixed deposits and the stock market. 3% versus 10%, it doesn't seem big, but as time goes, as things compound, it can be really, really big. I know that you know a lot of Malaysians, we are risk averse. A lot of my followers, they still ask me if something is PIDM protected, which obviously investments aren't. So if you're someone who is still a bit more risk averse, you're still afraid to invest your money into stock markets, then you, know, you don't have to throw everything to the stock markets now. You can always just start off safer. Maybe you have um, 10,000 ringgit, just take 10%, 20%. 1,000, 2,000 ringgit and try putting it into the stock market. The rest of it, you can leave it in ASB, you can leave it in fixed deposits if you wanted to. And it's not just the stock market. You can and you should invest in yourself as well. Like I said earlier in this video, your income, it is the most important thing. So if you can invest in yourself by paying for a course or something like that, just so you can learn a new skill or maybe even get better at it so you can earn more money, then it is extremely worth it. I used to be someone who, you know, wanted everything to be free. I wanted to learn new things, but I wanted it to be free. I didn't want to pay anything for it. And I would say it is possible because everything, you know, there's just so much free information online now. But let's say if you have a really good opportunity and you just have to pay a bit of money for it, just go for it. You know, it can be really worth it for you. It can help you grow a lot more money in the future. Of course, the caveat to this is don't get scammed. I know there are a lot of stock trading courses, especially that's going to charge you 5,000, 10,000 ringgit even just for you to try and learn trading. These things, they're not worth it in my opinion at least. So you need to identify, you know, what's worth it, what's not. Just don't spend too much money on it, but you do want to invest in yourself at the same time. Anyway, the fourth thing that I realized about money is that the richer you are, the richer you'll get. I know you guys will say, the this is the most obvious thing you can say. Uh, just hear me out. So the most obvious example of this is with regards to investing. Obviously for me, if let's say I had 100,000 ringgit invested, my friend has 1 million ringgit invested, obviously his total returns will be higher than mine. But it's not just about investment returns. Beyond that, I really do think that having money, it just makes making money easier. That's what happened to me at least. So thinking about saving up your first 10,000 ringgit, it seems hard. Thinking about saving 50,000 ringgit, of course, it seems even harder. Saving up your first 100,000 ringgit, to people who are starting out at zero, like me back then, it seems impossible. Like I'm not gonna achieve this in the next 10 years at least. But there's a reason people like Charlie Munger, they emphasize that you have to do whatever it takes to get to your first $100,000. He even goes to the extent to say that it doesn't matter what you do. If it means you have to walk everywhere, if it means you only have to eat cheap stuff until you hit that goal, do whatever it takes until you hit 100,000 ringgit in savings. For me, having this amount saved up, it gave me a lot of peace of mind because I felt financially stable. And I know that this is a major burden for a lot of people, you know, thinking about whether you can pay your bills next month, you know, how are you going to come up with money if an emergency came up. These are all things that a lot of people face, including myself back then. But once you can hit this amount of savings, things just become a lot easier because money is one less thing that you have to worry about. For me personally, it allowed me to take a risk with my career and it's ending up actually making me more money. So I made a whole video about how having savings in my early 20s, it did kind of change my life. If you guys wanted to check out that video, I'll leave the link down below as well. And the final thing that I learned about money is that it's not all about money. So I know this one sounds a bit weird. It's going against everything else that I said in this video, but this video is talking about, you know, the five biggest money lessons I learned. So I guess it still kind of fits. I mean, it's good for us to work hard to achieve our financial goals. I do think, you know, working hard, it is a very important characteristic to have. And it's also nice if you could, you know, grind our way so you can achieve that goal as early as possible. Who wouldn't want to have a nice amount of money in their 30s? Then they can then, you know, retire and do whatever they want. 
But we need to remember that having a lot of money, it shouldn't be your main goal. It's just a tool for us to get to our main goal. What I'm trying to say is don't lose sight of everything else trying to achieve your goal of having money. This is the main reason that I didn't like the FIRE movement anymore. Some of those guys, they were talking about saving something like 50 to 70% of their income every single month just so that they can retire somewhere in their 30s. To me, it just didn't make sense. I wanted to enjoy life as we go, you know? So what if I have to work a few extra years? Or so what if I have to work another 10 years? Even if I completely retired early on in my life, let's say I retired in my, in my 30s, I realized that I would just be so bored that I'd probably just die or something like that. And another thing that I would say with regards to this is that we should try our best to do work that we actually enjoy. So throughout my, I guess it's not so long, like six, seven years working experience, um, I turned down a lot of job offers because I just thought I wouldn't be happy working there. You know, we spend so much of our lives working, so we may as well enjoy it. Even if we don't enjoy it, you know, let's say no work is enjoyable to us, the very least is that we shouldn't hate our jobs. I'm extremely lucky because I managed to find things that I enjoy doing as work that also give me a decent income. If someone were to ask me, like, let's say tomorrow you have 5 million ringgit deposited into your bank account and you can do whatever you want to do with it, what would you do? My answer would probably be, I'll continue doing what I'm doing right now because I just, you know, really enjoy it. And that's also the part where, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, you'll actually get better at doing it because, you know, you like what you're doing. And this will in turn then get you high income as well. So those are the five big money lessons that I've learned in my personal finance journey so far. Um, of course, there will be more realizations to come as my life progresses and as I experience new things. But if you guys have any big money experiences as well, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video to the end, guys. Give us a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.